you write, ultimately, New Zealand's zero COVID strategy was immoral, incoherent, and a grand failure. Explain. So if you look at what happened, uh, New Zealand declared victory over the pandemic, over the virus over the first year. They had no COVID. They had repeated lockdowns over and over again. So they still had to worry about their kids going to school, their businesses staying open. Uh, but they had zero COVID. Um, they delayed vaccinating for a full year. They didn't really get started in, in earnest until like September, October 2021. Um, for a full year, th there was a, a delay in the key tactic that would get them out of the pandemic. And then now that they've opened up, the, essentially, it's a let it rip strategy. There are now more cases per capita through the whole pandemic in New Zealand than there were in the United States. Actually, weirdly, today, the uh, UK and the US, uh, New Zealand have the same number of COVID cases per capita through the pandemic. Um, and the, the overall excess death rates, that is deaths over and above what you uh, would expect during the pandemic, have exploded this past year uh, in 2022. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's essentially a policy that imposed misery on the people of New Zealand, relied on a vaccine that could not have been developed in country. Uh, and uh, and and then even when it was available, they delayed rolling it out. It really was a big failure. Uh, with I'm, you know, I even talked about the economic consequences, as you have. Well, indeed. And the thing is, Jay, it just delayed the inevitable. We we know it would. And I think something that isn't looked into much either is just the emotional toll that such a draconian policy took. And of course, that's expected in a communist country like China. I mean, I find what's going on there a disgrace, but. This is New Zealand. It's meant to be a Western democracy. What happened? I mean, I, I heard stories of, of expats who couldn't go home to bury their, their parents or their father or their yeah, mother. Yeah, yeah. They, they were, yep. the, uh, it was human rights violations on a grand scale. I, I, let's just give you one story that I find um, um, darkly amusing. Uh, during one of the lockdowns, Auckland basically prevented anyone from coming in and out uh, of of the, the borders of Auckland. There was a business set up to go outside of Auckland, smuggle Kentucky fried chicken across the border <laughs> into <laughs> Auckland, uh, which actually made me feel good about some of the people in New Zealand that, that they would try to yeah. resist these orders. These, these were violations of human rights for no purpose. It didn't actually end up serving an epidemiological purpose, protecting the, the people of New Zealand from, uh, from epidemiological harm. Yeah, anything for KFC, I, I would do that, I have to say, Dr. J. But no, absolutely, uh, I know of these cases, someone very close to me uh, locked up in a quarantine prison by Ardern, which, by the way, had human rights standards that the UN said was not even fit to hold a prisoner, uh, locked up in that hotel while their mother died down the road in hospital, just sick.